I'm Kay Smith, historical painter, artist, and I have been uh, pursuing the uh, history of the United States for more than 40 years. Battles, landscapes, landmarks, shrines, I'm there. I have known Colette Holt for a very long time, and she's on the board of the Pritzker Military Library. They set aside a room for the Tuskegee Airmen. Well, I wanted to do something to honor and remember the Tuskegee Airmen and my father, who was an airman. And I thought it would be wonderful if Kay Smith, uh, who was the artist laureate of Illinois, uh, would paint the painting. And she was good friends with my, with my parents and my father and knew him well. Colette went to Francis Parker School. My little daughter went to Francis Parker School. They were best friends. And Coleman Holt would bring her here after school for an hour's play. And he and I spoke and had a good visit every time they came to play. And in all this time, he never told me about the Tuskegee Airmen. And I knew him for years. Unlike, I think, a lot of people, my, my dad talked about the war, um, at least somewhat, and how much he loved to fly. I found out where three of the Tuskegee Airmen lived in our area that we could easily interview. And they, once you got them started, they had a whole story to tell. It was written, black scared lead, Blacks can't fight, and blacks most assuredly cannot fly complicated fighter planes. This is something that was in writing by the military. But Roosevelt wanted a third term. And when the black leaders put the pressure on him, he said, if you'll get me 20% of the black vote, I will at least get you started into those activities where you can pull the trigger. We had, when we take our final test flight, it would be a white officer a uh, commission officer, they would say some awful things to us to try to see if you're going to get excited over somebody calling your names or something, what are you going to do when a bullet is flying after, you know? But I didn't have no trouble flying the airplane. I fly to do whatever they send me, I better do. And that's to protect the bomber, our bomber. Because they're coming there to shoot down our bomber. We're going to be there to shoot them down. We aren't running from them, we're running to them. To fight a pilot, you all by yourself. You know what I mean? You got to do your own navigating, your own flying, your own shooting. You had 120 combat, combat missions. I guess so. I'm impressed. The fighters coming in, trying to shoot them down, they're trying to shoot the fighters down. They have the problem, not me. They got, they got to stay out of my way. So I could have these bombers, right? And and, and sometimes a hundred went out together. Is that right? That's and right. And then the the Mustangs, you, you Tuskegee Airmen, would be five ten thousand feet higher. Five thousand right. feet higher. Right. You remember the dog fights? It's a dog fight. It's a fight. And not a fight that I know about. <laughs> Here's what I'm puzzled about. What's that? You can't fire down toward the bombers. No. No. So you, you have to somehow position. You have to intercept yourself. before they get there. You peel off this way. But you have to come from the back, and you know what the speed he's going. If he's out there and I shoot, I got to know where he's going to be. Well, I might miss him. But on the other hand, I might not miss him. And if I don't miss him, he might be going down to the ground. We shot down the first German, uh, first jets. Johnson from uh, New York. Tuskegee Airmen shot down the first jet. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He shot down the first jet with a P-51. We did all right. We were pretty good. I can't imagine now ever doing any painting without research. I love it. The military library was an invaluable resource, and that's what they're supposed to be. When I took a sketch to uh, Ken Clark, who's president of the military library, and to Jackie Bonavia, who is director of development, they liked what I was doing, and it was Ken who recommended that I talk to Don Casey, the volunteer on the front desk, a very uh, affable man, very successful. He's an attorney. He was a bombardier on one of the V-17s that were shot down, and uh, he was taken prisoner. The bombers were dropping in a triangle kind of shape. Okay. The bombs fall like that, and they obliterate everything in the triangle. 
So there's not uh, not separation. They're no. Just, okay, so it, they, the bombers wouldn't be bombing like this. And the fighters would not be coming back over the target because the target has guns shooting up. Well, I, I had been chasing a German. Well, where's the German? And he had a lot to say about it. A lot to say about it. The Germans, the Germans would be after the formation. But they keep them away from them. Well, maybe they did. I don't know. This is, this is a, it's a good picture. When I put down my first brush stroke, I already know my pattern quite well because I've worked it out. But you can never control watercolor completely or even nearly completely. So it's a, it's a nervous situation. Let me see the sky through here. Oh, it looks good over the blue. I've reached the point where I'm going to have to start really painting. This is the smoke. So I get these in charcoal. This plane has been shot down. There it is. It's fire running down. The kill. What I do isn't as dangerous as flying a plane into battle, but the process is similar. The smoke starts spinning off like that. Years of training and preparation and practice allows one to summon these resources at the moment they're needed. A little dry brush in there because a little light will indicate speed. And of course, the Tuskegee Airmen had a special challenge. They fought a war within a war. Good, good. I want that to roll down. They transferred us to Indiana to a place whose name was Freeman Field. Can you, can you, can you <laughs> think about that? Yeah. And the first thing we did was go to the officer's club. But we got there, Colonel said, sorry, you can't come in. He called us all into a hangar and said that we could not use the tennis court, we could not use the officer's club or the swimming pool after five o'clock because the whites came in and especially the white women came in in this small town. Well, if you work all day, what are you going to do? Yeah, which... And you're paying for all of this. They take, your money. they take it out of your salary. So we booed the colonel off the stage. The colonel called the general. And the general said, set up a court martial board. So each one of us had to come in. First, Lieutenant Quentin Smith. Have you read my base regulations? I have, sir. Will you sign that you will obey it? No, sir. Are you familiar with the 64th article of war? And I gulped. The 64th says, failure to obey the direct order of a commanding officer is punishable up to and including death. And he said, I order you to sign. And he sucked the wind out of me and I just shook my head. He said, answer yes or no. Well, I said, no. <laughs> he rapped on the gavel and said, you are under arrest. Three o'clock that morning, soldier came in, loaded and locked. He said, move, Lieutenant. I got orders to shoot. He said, you got a half an hour to put your, get your gear together. He said, you got 20 years of Leavenworth. Oh my God. I said, what? He said, you got 20 years of Leavenworth. Oh, Leavenworth was segregated too, and they weren't ready for 101 oh. black men. You mean the prisoners were segregated? <laughs> in Leavenworth, in the, in the federal pen, yes. And they, that's why we had to go back to Fort Knox. Well, anyway, they did pool their monies together. And they sent and got an ACP and a young man named Thurgood Marshall. Well, it got too big for the colonel. Got too big for the general. And President Truman said, turn them loose. And so we were turned loose in August of 1945. Thurgood said, look, I can get you an honorable discharge, but there's a letter in your file that says that you are the worst officers that the Army has ever had. And I can't get that out. But they had a fire in St. Louis where all these records were kept. 
all the records were burned up. Oh my goodness. The Lord works in mysterious ways. It's his wonders to perform. One of the things that I think is very interesting about the airmen is that because of the opportunity that they did get and because they were able to succeed and overcome, um, they became an extraordinarily accomplished group of people. Doctors, lawyers, they were all pretty high achievers that way. I had never heard the Tuskegee Airmen. I didn't find out about Coleman until I was given this assignment. And I'm grateful, I am grateful that I had this opportunity to do this research, to meet these men. And I can't convey to you how much it means to me. You're kidding me, right? You got up there in this little essentially cockpit that was all not, it wasn't open, but it might as well have been. No pressurization. Um, and people are shooting at you. I, I just, I, I don't know how you do that, but daddy wanted to fly. And he said it should beat the infantry. Don't you want to learn how to fly? I said, it's going to be a war on pretty soon. I said, Willa, I said, I believe in terra firma. She said, what's that? I said, the firmer the ground, the less terror. <laughs> <laughs> It never hit me. I might have got a little hole. 